Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Keith Thompson. And really quickly, I want to respond to uh, Soteriology 101, who basically made a clip or responded to a clip I uploaded yesterday of uh, R.C. Sproul titled, R.C. Sproul Tired of Pussyfooting. And basically, the whole segment is them attacking Calvinism uh, as being something that's unbiblical and, and, and not a correct representation of the gospel. And again, I've made these videos over and over and over again, and I will continue to make them to defend not John Calvin, not Calvinism, but doctrine that rightly defends, explains, and presents the gospel completely, okay? See, those who are Calvinists, we're not talking about hyper-Calvinism, okay? We're talking about those who rightly attain to the five points of the tulip, okay, as being totally biblical. My, my question to anyone who is against Calvinism is, which one of the five points, and no, we're not four-pointers or three-pointers. If you're not a five-pointer, you're not holding to the biblical doctrine, okay? But my question is to anyone who is against Calvinism, which one of the five points do you disagree with? Okay, is it total depravity you disagree with? Okay, because there's tons of scripture to prove that man is totally depraved, okay? One of the most famous ones is Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, okay? Or, or is it unconditional election, Okay. And Arminian's worst nightmare is Romans 8 and 9, okay? Romans 8, 29, and Romans uh, 9, 13, Romans 9, 18. The Arminian hates this. The free willer hates these verses, okay? Or is it limited atonement, okay? Tons of verses to substantiate that, okay? That salvation is not for all, okay? That there will be few, not many, okay? John 17, 9. What the Lord say? I pray for them, not for the world, but for them the Father has given me. Okay? Or is it irresistible grace? Okay, John 6, 44. Or is it uh, the perseverance of the saints? 1 Thessalonians 5, Romans 6, 6. Listen, one of the things I notice with people who are against Calvinism is when they try to explain it, they just go in circles. And it gets confusing just listening to them. OK, uh, even uh, listen, I'm going to post a link to this video. Uh, Soteriality 101's uh, guest, Kevin Thompson, the link, I, I will post a link to this. But at 33 minutes into it, Kevin Thompson attacks sovereignty. He literally attacks the notion that God is sovereign. What I said before was. A lot of the times people who are against Calvinism are not against it because they think it's unbiblical. They're against it because they hate it. They hate the idea that God is totally sovereign and man is wretchedly depraved and unable to do anything because he's dead in his sins. They hate that notion. Sinners want to be able to take credit for a portion of their salvation. They want to be able to say that we know that God saves. We know that God completed the work on the cross, but I am the one that chose him. OK, they want to disregard Ephesians 2, 9 of which says there will be no boasting because they want to boast on a day of judgment. They want to be able to say, God did 50%. I did the other 50%. I came to him. I repented. I'm the one that chose him. Okay. Even though clearly the word of God says no one seeks after God. Okay. Romans 3, 11. No one seeks after God. No one even understands him. Okay. Arminians, free willers, they cling to the arm of the flesh because they envy they, 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 they praise man, okay? They worship man more than they do God. They hate the idea that God is totally sovereign and that man is unable, okay, because he's dead. They hate that idea. And if you just listen to this video, they, they run around in circles, okay, making not a lot of sense, okay? Um, and, and you see that a lot with people who, who try to uh, put down uh, people who, who hold to Calvinism. And what they said about R.C. Spro, nothing of what they said against R.C. Spro adds up, okay? Especially the, like the point they talked about the antinomianism. Was he wrong in saying that antinomianism was unbiblical? Was he wrong? No, he wasn't, okay? These people do not rightly grasp scripture. And like I said before in my other video attacking this issue, you must be awakened the truth. It must be illuminated to you. It's not enough that you can just take the scripture and read it. You, you must be shown, okay? It must be illuminated to you. And how that happens is through the Holy Spirit, through the regenerative work of the Holy Spirit. And not just that, but possessing the Holy Spirit, becoming a new cre creation, 
a new creature that possesses the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating when people attack Calvinism. Okay, because it's like you're attacking truth, and it's it's it, to the people who rightly understand it. it it's just it's 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 uh, it's just frustrating. Uh, but I will continue to defend it to my dying day because it is truth. Okay, and um, the tulip is 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 wonderful. It 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 breaks down exactly what you need to understand and know to rightly grasp the full counsel of the gospel, okay? In a way where you can explain it biblically, okay? Um, and like I said the, like I said before, the problem with Francis Chan was he doesn't hold, he doesn't take serious doctrine, and that's why he's all over the place. Doctrine is important. What you believe matters, okay? Anyone can say they're a Christian. Anyone can say they believe in Jesus Christ, okay? But it is their doctrine that proves, prove, proves the God they worship. All right. So I just wanted to touch on that very quickly and just defend what I believe to be a doctrine that rightly honors this thing of ours as Christians. So thank you for listening. When J.I. Packer wrote the uh, historical introduction to the Fleming Revell edition of Martin Luther's uh, Bondage of the Will, he gave a serious warning to English readers about the parallels between historic Roman Catholicism and the drifts found within Arminianism. And uh, yet I think we also have to be fair here and say that there are some very important differences between historic Arminianism and Roman Catholicism. But we can explore that in a few moments and show how they do touch each other and can uh, become seductive. That, that uh, that the weaknesses of Arminianism, I believe, expose a person to the, uh, the Roman Catholic view. I think it would be true that to, to, to think that at, in, in the uh, 17th century, when the Reformed faith had its crisis with Arminianism that, uh, that ended in the Synod of Dordrecht, that the Reformers felt that if they acquiesced to the protests or the remonstrations of the uh, Arminians at that time, that in a very real way, they would have been putting their feet back on a path to Rome. Now, let me clarify that. I don't think any of them believed that Arminianism was or is today Roman Catholicism. We're talking about putting your feet on a path that goes in a certain direction. Now, the big difference between historic Arminianism and Roman Catholicism is that Arminianism does believe and affirms categorically the doctrine of justification by faith alone. That is, a, an orthodox Arminian believes that the grounds for his justification, for his salvation, is not his own righteousness, but the righteousness that has been won for him by the work of Jesus Christ. Now, both Rome and Arminianism believe that uh, the work of Christ is necessary, that grace is necessary, that faith is necessary. They all agree on that. But in the final analysis, the Roman Catholic Church would say that God declares me just if and only when I become inherently righteous. I can't be righteous without the help of grace, without the help of Jesus, without the help of faith, and all of that. But not until I become actually righteous will God declare me righteous. Whereas historic Arminianism believes that the righteousness by which we are saved is a righteousness that's not in me, but it's outside of me that has been performed by Jesus. And I receive the imputation of that righteousness when I have faith. And so, again, from a creedal perspective, it would, it would be slanderous to the uh, Arminian cause to accuse them of being Roman Catholic in their theology. However, when you get down to the nitty-gritty and you push Arminianism to its logical conclusion, there is where you see the uh, extreme danger of slipping into a works righteousness.